State your name for the record. My name is Doris Bertacci. I hope that a certain numbing has not set in for you. Uh, and I will delete the things that have already been said, so everything I say is going to be new. Okay. I am a clinical social worker practicing privately in Irvington, Westchester County. My area of expertise is not in the adoption field, but in college mental health. And I had 35 years on the campus of Columbia University. Nevertheless, there, on a random basis, I treated a number of students whose difficulties involved typical complexities that psychotherapists encounter in young adults who are adopted. And I want to add here that you hear the word knowledge of their origins, knowledge of their birth certificates, uh, but I'm here uh, in particular to speak of the psychological impact of the sealed record which is just as profound as the intellectual knowledge that adoptees are needing. Despite all the brilliance of Columbia students and academic achievements, each of these students was profoundly impacted by having to live in a kind of emotional suspension, stuck developmentally, and at times struggling with poor concentration. At a school like Columbia, that's a disaster. This is because at a critical time that their peers were in the process of moving on to form their identity separate from their families, make choices in relationships, and prepare for their careers, the adopted students were stalled, distracted, and even clinically depressed. Virtually all of their relationships were affected, and this is the psychological part, and they had to live with an intolerable anxiety about their medical health and unknown vulnerabilities. They had contempt for their fraudulent amended birth certificates, which represented barriers to their being able to get on with their lives. I am active clinically in the psychology of adoption and have published on the complex psychological meanings of the adopted person's need to search for their biological parents. What I don't usually reveal professionally is that I was born in New York State and languished for nine months in several foster homes until placed for adoption through the New York State Charities Aid Society. I was a ward of the state, so one might say that the state legislature owned me at that time. I was severely traumatized by the nonsense of the adoption agencies at that time that decided that it was so important for these lovely potential adoptive parents to have perfect babies that, and in those days, intelligence of these babies was terribly important to them. So they intentionally made babies wait for a full year, uh, but they didn't want these babies to make attachments to the foster parents. Psychologists know that this is catastrophic, but I was one on the assembly line and somehow survived it. I was underweight and according to the papers could only cry throughout the intelligence tests that agencies insisted on putting babies through to be sure they weren't retarded. Because of my ominous test results, my adoptive parents were tactfully advised not to expect too much. My search became activated when I was in my early 30s. In fact, I was born with a heart defect and my daughter was born with a heart defect. My inability to provide her doctors with information about my family history was probably one of the main things that compelled me to search. Suffice it to say that after nine agonizing months of searching, I found my birth mother. It is not true to say that most people who find their birth mothers have the money to do it. That's simply not accurate. Uh, tens of thousands of adoptees throughout the state have done exactly what I did, which was get around the system. In fact, it's probably why I became a social worker. My guidance counselor said, you're very uh, social and you work hard, why don't you be a social worker? But in fact, unconsciously, I had heard the word social worker from my parents and I knew they had a lot to do 
with my connection with my birth mother. So really, and I learned this years later, I became a social worker so that I could figure out how they think, what they do, so that I could beat them at their own game. I didn't know it at the time. I learned from my birth mother that soon after she had placed me, she became an amateur astrologist, desperately trying to follow me through the stars and sending me messages regarding my safety. She had been continuing to do this up until we spoke for the first time. Mainly, I'd like to cite four issues relating to the wording of the bill. I believe that an explanatory section is needed accompanying the bill written for the public so that these issues can be clarified. First, for me, the greatest confusion involves the references to the two forms that birth mothers can complete to be filed with the original birth certificate. The forms are relatively new ideas, so they are relevant only to recent, current, and future adoptions. I think it has to be remembered that adoptions have been going on since 1935, so there are different phases of what has gone on over time. For the vast majority of adopted people, these forms are not relevant because they are too recent. I think there needs to be greater clarity that the adopted person has a legal right to their original birth certificate, regardless of whether there are any attached forms or papers. The references to the forms in the way the bill is worded sounded like conditions that need to be met before the original birth certificate is released. Second, I have reason to believe that the presentation of proof could be another potential problem. I'm going to summarize this and simply say it's important to have live personnel uh, in Albany to answer questions because they're not going to be as simple as interstate problems. There are going to be a lot of other things. It's terribly frustrating to have to just stay and read for a very long time various online instructions that aren't relevant to what you're trying to find out. I believe the bill as written with only perfunctory reference to medical information gives very short shrift to the many complex health and emotional issues for every adopted person. This would be another reason for the bill to be accompanied by an explanatory section. Spelling out, and these are very complex, you can't just say medical. It's neurological, psychological, biochemical, and genetic. It's now the 21st century when this information along with updated family histories will become critical for the medical record of every person in this state. Fourth, the latter part of the bill refers to adoption procedures and the term law guardian is used. To my knowledge, no adopted person in this state has ever had any law guardian or guardian ad litem to represent their own best interests separate from the interests of the potential parents. As in child custody litigation, and by the way, I specialize in treating parents who are in custody litigation, and I've learned a great deal about the thread that cuts through uh, both adoption and this area of family law. The truth is that family law has always been focused primarily and often exclusively on the interests and rights of adults while ownership of the child is exchanged. I wish I could take credit for this, but somebody else observed that the only other class of people who have been denied their own birth certificates are the American slaves. I find it very alarming that so many of today's adoptions are handled by private lawyers, and I hope that the state legislature can do something about this, with no training whatsoever in the impact on the children's lives of their role in getting the papers signed. It was clear to me that the two judges that spoke knew nothing whatsoever about the real psychological issues. There is no professional screening of these parents, and when you hear about the horrors of children being abused and neglected by their adoptive parents, uh, you can't wonder why there's no screening of these people. This is not the domain of lawyers to do, and no required protocol regarding maintenance of records in perpetuity for the child. The lawyers can basically just handle signing of the papers, and that's that. 
I know of instances, in fact, where with private lawyers handling this, there have been clear conflicts of interest. And God knows what becomes of the birth mothers and the way they are treated by these lawyers or other entities when they decide to place their children for adoption. If opponents of this bill are so concerned about birth mothers of your Perhaps they can stand up to the plate now and write a bill requiring in private adoptions the sensitive and professional handling of today's birth mothers, both prior to and following the time that she places her child for adoption. These children need the state's protection as all adoptees have always needed but never gotten. In sealing the birth records, New York State has pushed aside its usual protocol of careful inquiry, evidence, and properly signed contracts. And to this day, it has never understood or cared about the huge price that so many adopted people have always paid for this secret deal, a deal that was made over them when they were helpless babies. For future reference, my recommendation is that the state require that every child have her or his own representation, consisting of a state-appointed team namely a guardian or attorney for the child and a qualified adoption professional. What I want to say most emphatically is that adoption is first and foremost about the needs of the helpless adopted child, not only at the time the papers are signed but throughout their lives. In sealing the record, the state did not make a primary commitment to the welfare of the child for life which morally and ethically is what adoption should be about. The concern of opponents now is with protecting the birth mother, despite the fact that there was no spoken commitment to her at all, simply assumptions and biases of the 1930s, 80 years ago. The state did betray the trust of most, most birth mothers, who, as far as we've been able to determine, never intended full confidentiality from their child. Even in the minority of cases now in which birth mothers would object to the opening of the record, this would represent a conflict of interest, we know. But to this I say that the conflict, like any other, needs to be resolved in favor of the party least responsible for the circumstances in the first place. You know who that is. Whenever any child is born, every mother has a moral responsibility to ensure the safety and welfare of her child. If the mother is a birth mother planning to place her child for adoption, whatever her wishes may be about confidentiality, they cannot eclipse the human rights of the child. At a junction such as this, I believe that honesty is the best policy. In my view, all the state needs to do is admit that the record was sealed in a different time and culture when the preoccupation of adoption workers, most of whom, by the way, were not professional, was with shame and secrecy, and when there was insufficient information at that time about what the impact of sealing the record would really be over time. I want to offer you the following consideration that Adam Pertman just mentioned in passing. Since opponents of the bill are so concerned about protecting only the birth mother of the past, they and the public can know about a form of protection for birth mothers that is already available to them in the system. I refer to the licensed professional social work and mental health systems that have full confidentiality built into their code of ethics and protected by law. Any birth mothers wishing to avail themselves of supportive help and psychoeducational services regarding the very sensitive issues involved in opening the record should have access to an interactive website through the State Health Department, drawn up and overseen by qualified professionals, please not computer techies, that will direct them to the appropriate resources and communities throughout the state. In fact, I would be happy to offer my assistance with this. To conclude, opening the record should certainly have priority now, but it is only the beginning of what needs to be done in order to meet the needs of everyone but giving priority to the human rights of the child in the most compassionate way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.